bolt that I that I found that I leveraged, and um, so that would spit things out into H base. And then basically you just have to map the interfaces between those to make it all work kind of through your thing, and then um, and then create something like that. So I found a, um, a so I kind of wrote a, a Twitter spout um, that sucks things in from Twitter. Um, found one of those, and then uh, an H base one, and then you just have to kind of match the interfaces as your data flows through, make it all, um, make it all so work. So you put the time to right now is using a storm piece then? Yes, so the, 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 the real time data is using storm, and then that, that historical data flow was all the, basically the, the Game of Thrones, the actual time of Game of Thrones, so that we would have that historic. But then we can keep sucking in real time data just to have it and process it and uh, get a nice big data set. Um, yeah, so yeah. Twitter have two different APIs for that, or is that just the process? We we were using the same Twitter API for both okay. for both ends. Yeah, great questions, you guys. Awesome, and I'll make sure to give you the link uh, if there's interest. Yes. Does Azure like the GPU cluster support like the GPU stuff or that? Yeah. So I think some of them do and some of them don't. It depends on what machines you're putting it on because so we you have, have like the, a dedicated GPU. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we there's the different yeah. levels of you know the. Um, your, the A0, the like yeah. D series, A series, all those different things. And so I think um, there's a series that does have support for that, but let, let me ch uh, double check to make sure because I don't want to accidentally lie to you. Um, yes, sir. In, in, in a funny way, I actually want you to say a little commercial right now. A <laughs> developer wants me to make a marketing pitch? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? Dun, 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 dun. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait for it, wait for it. That's it, Twitter. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> because I want to sell it to my boss. Okay. Uh, um, is 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 what are some examples that have actually like you know made yeah, people money yeah. with big data and Azure? I have um, a case study I'm going to go through at the end. So let me can I press oh, pause fine. on that and I'm going to launch I'll let you want to do. But yeah, there are there are a ton of case studies, but I'm happy to help you make your case to your manager. Okay. Um, and if not, there's a bunch of sales guys who are even more happy. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> but, like, I, want to talk, I want to talk to someone who actually knows how to use it. I'm so sick of sales managers who are yeah. like, uh, yeah, that's how it works. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm happy to chat with you. Okay. Yes, sir. Is there a resource where you can actually go through and learn how to set this up? Yes, yes, it says. Okay, so you guys, uh, Azure has like the best documentation. Um, I'm a, a huge fan, so uh, documentation Azure right here. Um, so this is, so it's um, azure.microsoft.com, WAC, E-N-U-S, uh, WAC documentation. And I think if you just go to the Azure site and click on documentation, it'll take you here too. So this is the documentation center, and I just, I love how it's organized. So Microsoft sites vary in how good the documentation is. Some of them are awesome, some of them are not so good. Um, this one I, I truly, really like. Um, and here's why. It, it separates it out based on like what you're trying to do. So what language do I want to code for? So if you want to separate it by language, like I want to do .NET, I want to do PHP, I want to do Python, you can just grab like language from right there. Or if you're into, you want to work with a certain service, so let's say um, you get really excited about the machine learning that I talked about today. Then you can just go here and under analytics, so it, big data, you were asking about big data, sir. So you could just go down here to the documentation by service, go under analytics, and click on HD Insight. Um, and HD Insight is the, is the Hadoop on Azure stuff, so you can look into that. Here's the machine learning specifically. And around big data, they actually have this awesome resource called the Big Data um, Learning Map. Actually, let me show it for you right now, because I just I love this. Um, this is something, learning, learning Guide for Hadoop. I think this is it. Um, so if you go to the HD Insight and then click on Learning Guide for Hadoop, yeah, there's this learning map for Hadoop. So this is like awesome. So it kind of takes you through like a step-by-step -step learning path for how to like master this stuff. So here's just kind of the tell me about HD Insight and then it links to all these different articles. So what's Hadoop, what's HBase, what's Storm, how is the data stored, how does that all work? And then use some tutorials. So this will be, this is the getting started kind of like, this is all theoretical, the tell me about it, like how does it work? It kind of gives you the, um, from a, from a, conceptual level, and then this right here is kind of the, the how to get started at the beginning. Um, and then there's provisioning of clusters, so how do I get started with provisioning clusters, and then there's a whole bunch of really nice samples. So estimating pi, a word count thing, um, all kinds of good streaming examples, so there's all kinds of good stuff. And then it takes you to the bottom for some more, um, kind of more advanced topics at the end. So how do I do something in real time? How do I uh, develop and you know uh, run stuff in parallel? How do I do all these different things? 
So all of that good stuff right there. So how to upload data to get into the file, it's all kinds of stuff. And then of course, you can also follow this amazing technical blog, blogs.msdn.com with Jennifer. Here she writes some really good stuff. I actually have a whole bunch of big data stuff coming, so like follow my blog and I'm, I, I, there's, there, there will be good stuff there, trust me. Um, and I'll, I'm gonna publish my, the link and stuff to that tweet DVR, and the link to the code and stuff all as well. All right, how are we doing? Probably, oh yeah, I'm going over time, so let me, let me jump back to what I'm supposed to be talking about. Um, okay, so here, so we kind of went over, I was past this, I was past this. So um, we just talked about Hadoop, and I showed you some of the cool stuff you can do with Hadoop. Um, the next thing is websites. So if you just want to have a basic website, um, Azure has support for that too. Not only ASP.NET, the Microsoft kind of web solution, but we also have support for PHP and Python and everything else under the sun. Um, Java, Node. Um, and not only that, but there's also support for some web apps. So if you just wanted to spin up, say, like WordPress, a WordPress blog or something like that, you can do that using, um, using this. We have a whole bunch of kind of templates and stuff. And just like, okay, we want a virtual machine that has, uh, you know, that hosting in it. So there's some support for all of that good stuff. Um, there's continuous deployment workflows with Visual Studio Online, GitHub integration, Bitbucket, uh, Team City, Hudson, so all kinds of good stuff, and then support across multiple databases as well. I think most of the major databases, not only Microsoft SQL, but MySQL, um, MongoDB, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so, and then I'm sorry, I should have had this up, but so there's a whole bunch of, there's also a, a gallery for here, and it is now integrated into the portal as well. So I can go to the portal and see all of these different options here. So I will do the same thing right here. So um, this is the, the community edition, but here, let me do this for you in real, so that way you, you trust me. So we'll leave big data. Now we're gonna go over to the web stuff. And that is up here, web apps. And we'll create a new web app, like so. And so you can do quick create, custom create, and the gallery. So with quick create, you can just say, I want, you know, Jen's website, .azurewebsites.net, um, and choose where you want to host it, and then I have multiple subscriptions, so it's going to ask me what subscription I want to put it in. You can custom create, and then it will um, uh, allow you to do that too, but I want to show you the gallery, so I really want to show you something new. I'm show you the gallery, just to show you some of the, the templates that are in there. Uh, because there, there are a lot of them, so this is kind of the all A to Z, so there's a lot of different stuff in here. But you can see there's various app frameworks um, that we have here, Bottle, uh, KPHP, Django, um, there's blog software, so that's where you're going to have your WordPress and that blog and um, all kinds of good stuff uh, here. Um, oh, CMS, I'm sorry, the WordPress will be under here. Um, so all of this up, Drupal, um, all these e-commerce solutions, there's a whole bunch of e-commerce stuff under here. Um, forums, if you want to create like, forums on your site, there's some neat uh, apps for that. Um, galleries, um, other templates and tools, and wiki uh, type stuff. So there's, there's just a, a whole bunch of stuff that's available out of the box. And then of course you can upload uh, your own stuff as well. So awesome, awesome support um, for this too. Um, okay, and then the last thing, I think this is the last thing, is the Windows Azure Mobile Services. Let me put this that you have something to see. Uh, so Windows Azure Mobile Services is basically if I want to build a mobile app, any mobile app on any uh, phone, any smartphone platform, um, you can use Windows Azure Mobile Services. And so it's allowed, anybody use Parse? No, wait. <laughs> use Windows Azure Mobile Services. Um, so it, it's, the equivalent, it's the equivalent of Parse. And so a lot of times in a, in a non-Microsoft crowd, people will be jumping on Parse. Um, but, so what, what this gives you is essentially, if I wanted to create a mobile app and I want it to work like across various platforms, um, that's what this gives me. It allows me to, there are um, APIs to allow you to code for um, iOS um, is, and Android and Windows Phone and uh, Windows, the Windows Store, so Windows kind of 8 apps and Windows 10 apps as well. And it gives you basically three things, so three common things that most people want with mobile service stuff. Um, one of the things is a database. So oftentimes, you know, you have all the mobile apps and you want data to have a common store or whatever. So no matter where, what phone or whatever, what device I'm accessing from, I can get to the same data. And so it gives you kind of database support, a database in the cloud that you can use um, across all of these phones. It also gives you authentication, and that is really, really nice. Like I can wire up on um, like Twitter off in like 10 minutes. It's super, super simple, super easy. Um, and, and they give you kind of, you can, 
roll your own. So there's the ability to roll your own off, so you can create your own kind of username password solution. Or they give you five ones out of the box, which is to integrate with a Microsoft account, a Google account, Facebook, or Twitter off. So in case you do have a mobile app that you want to you know, know your user on there, and you want to somehow um, authenticate them, uh, instead of making them remember yet another username and password, you can just have them enter one of those credentials and then they go authenticate against you know, Twitter or whatever and then um, <coughs> federate the identity back and then you have the ability to you know, you know, keep track of uh, who's using your stuff. So really, really nice options there. Um, and it, all those four major identity providers, I think I, I have an identity on all four of them. I have a Facebook, a Twitter, and a, a Google account and a Microsoft account. So um, really, really nice. Uh, kind of cover everybody. Oh, and Active Directory too. So if you're in an enterprise environment and you're using Active Directory, there's also Active De uh, Directory integration built in here as well. You know, there's a classic gadget with Active Directory. Is so many times they'll say, oh, you want to do multiple domains. Does it, does does it support it? multiple domains? Yeah, it's a simple basic thing, but it, it trips up so many things. But I, you know, I don't know off the top of my head. I've never tried to do multiple domains on Active Directory with mobile services, so I can't answer that for certain. Um, but I can research it and let you know. Any other questions I can't answer for you guys? <laughs> okay, awesome. Okay, so um, and then the other thing is there is support for um, things like Xamarin and PhoneGap, now Cordova. Um, we have support for those kind of through the community stuff as well. All right, so that's Azure Mobile Services, and I can show you that as well. How are we doing on time? Okay, so we'll just jump over to here. We're in virtual machines. We'll roll up to mobile services. And so this gives you everything. And there's some, if you go to like the documentation page that I showed you before for mobile services, awesome videos. There's like a 10 minute video that shows you how to wire up the Twitter off and stuff. Like really, really easy, short. I think it's less than 10 minutes even. It's, it's really nice and easy and fast. So here you just go to new, create a new mobile service, and then it gives you kind of, all right, specify the URL. What do you want your backend database to be? Create a free one if you want. Um, and then the other thing is you don't actually have to use that because it gives you, so with mobile services, it uh, kind of intercepts all of the CRUD operations. So it'll give you kind of the default insert into whatever, into your SQL uh, database. But what you can do is if you want to do any data verification before the uh, thing is, you have the ability to intercept any messages that are coming in because it's all coming in via REST calls. And so then what you can do is instead of inserting into a SQL database, you can actually insert into a MongoDB or whatever you choose. So for those of you that are open source and don't want to use SQL, you don't have to, even though it shows only SQL databases right here. You don't have to. Um, okay, so that's that. That's mobile services. And we'll jump back over here. Okay, so the Microsoft and open source momentum. So fun fact um, for, the, for the Linux crew. Um, so for our like virtual machines, our kind of infrastructure as a service offering, um, 25, I think it's up from 20% to like 25% of the machines running on there are Linux. So it's already, you know, up to 25% um, are, are Linux that are running in our cloud. So very strong support. It's something we're taking very seriously. It's a fourth of our workload right now. So it is something that we are planning to support and, and really, really taking seriously and treating as a first class citizen. Um, CodePlex, so CodePlex, does, it, does anyone know CodePlex? All right, it was, it was Microsoft's open source thing. It was kind of like our, our GitHub, a place to post code and stuff like that. Um, we, it's kind of fallen off of where we're, we're all kind of posting on GitHub now. Um, but I, I put that in there just as kind of a evidence to show that was, uh, it's growing. So between 2010 and 2015, you can see how much it grew and that we are you know, turning the battleship slowly and, and really trying to be more open and contribute things. And that is, this has been coming for a while. Um, Microsoft's Web Matrix, um, I threw that in there because there's a lot of, there's integrated support for Git in there. It's really easy to do PHP with that, so it's kind of a, um, helps you build websites very easily. So just another tool that kind of shows we're trying to do that. Um, for Hadoop, I actually think Microsoft is one of the top 10 contributors into the Hadoop core at this point um, because we're, we're really working with them and, and trying to make sure it's supported on our stack and have been, have been doing a lot of work around that. So we're, um, we're really kind of making momentum and I think be, you know, becoming hopefully a, a good team player in the, in the open source world. All right, and here's a whole bunch of customers. So the person who asked for case studies, there are a plethora of case studies online. 
Um, we have a whole thing on the Azure website of case studies, and you can actually, there's little filters. You can actually type in, here's kind of the, what I'm looking for. I want you know these kind of scenarios, and then it'll return it for you. So you can feel free to check that out. One that I was going to dive into was the, um, just because I think this picture is hilarious. Um, <laughs> for some reason, this just reminds me of a Quidditch match. I don't know why. <laughs> Rugby, but I think I see a, a stupid American. I take a look at this and I think, oh, it's the four houses. <laughs> Ten points to Ravenclaw. Uh, so yeah. So this is this is the, the British and um, and Irish Lions and rugby. Probably I'm assuming that since we're all American here, there's not a ton of maybe not a ton of uh, rugby fans. But in the rest of the world, this is a really big deal. And the, um, the, so the British and Irish Lions is a group of people that um, the, the kind of the best rugby players from Scotland, Wales, England, and uh, Ireland. And so every four years they have this big tour where the best rugby players compete. And so just to make it onto this team is like a really big deal. It's like the best, very, very best from all the different teams in that area. And then they go, and so this, in this particular thing, they were going to play in Australia and Hong Kong, rugby there. And so they wanted to, um, and they hadn't won in like 16 years, and this was basically like an away game. So what they wanted to do was um, have a an app that would allow the kind of the fans to be part of the action and bring you know their hundred thousand you know fans with them on this tour. And so they wrote one and they created a uh, an Android app, an iOS app, and a Windows Phone app to to show it. And they were able to upload like you know re near real time data to that app so people could get it. They had the social media element so that people like they kind of the fans felt like they were part of it in there even though they weren't. And this may or may not be a coincidence, but the the um, British and Irish Lions broke their 16 game losing streak and actually won using Windows Azure. Coincidence? <laughs> Non-professional people doing it. It wasn't hardcore geeks like us. It was non-professionals doing this. It supported over 12,000 page requests per uh, second, with only 10 instances of Azure uh, supporting that. And then they reduced their deployment time and caught in the hosting expense by 80 percent. So, uh, some some neat uh, stuff there. Okay. The last thing I wanted to mention is just our BizSpark program. If you are a startup, if you are building mobile apps on the side, whatever, you can get access to $150 a month. Um, for up to three years of free Windows Azure credit. So feel free to talk to me about that if you are uh, working in a startup or, or doing that. Um, I do also have, um, you also get access to like every piece of software that Microsoft makes. It's an MSDN Ultimate subscription if any of you are familiar with that from work. Uh, but it's, it's like everything that we make, even like Microsoft Streets and Trips, which is our GPS software that nobody uses. And just like, <laughs> everything is on there. And like all of the Windows OS is back to XP and stuff like that. So it's really, really great. So if you are at all um, a startup, the, the criteria are you have to be making less than a million dollars uh, a year. You have to be less than five years old, not you, your company. Um, and then, uh, and then you're, uh, you have to be developing a piece of software. So if you're a consultant, a consulting company, that doesn't count, I'm sorry. You have to be building your own intellectual property uh, to be eligible. But if you are, you can go to bizmark.com, sign up and get a ton of free stuff. Talk to me if you're going to do it because I can give you a code that will get you through faster. Um, so talk to me if you are interested in that as well. And then that is it for questions. Yes, sir? Can you be a company that does both develop IP and also contract to kind of boost capital money? Um, I, we'd have to talk. Let's talk about it. We can find that out. Um, okay. Are there any other questions? Yes, sir. Is there something like this part for nonprofits? If you're uh, there are other programs for nonprofits. They don't give quite as much stuff, but we do have uh, like TechSoup and stuff like that that gives stuff to nonprofits. We also have a program for students. Um, called DreamSpark that gives a ton of free stuff to, to students as well. And they just added um, Azure hours to that as well. So there are a couple different things. But yeah, um, I'm happy to help you out or try to get you hooked up if there's a nonprofit thing. Or, um, yeah, Let's, we can talk. Let's talk. <laughs> Any other questions? Did anybody learn something?